what's going on everybody? It's Larry Lercy. Welcome back to the channel. You know, I do a lot of videos on Photoshop and different plugins for Photoshop and the number one question I get is some variation of which is better? Photoshop, Topaz, Luminar, which should I use? Which should I get? And it's a very complicated question, but I thought what we would do today is go ahead and dive into that. And I'm going to talk about the strengths and the weaknesses of each, why I use which one, and maybe that'll kind of help give you a little direction on which way you want to go. It's going to be really interesting, and we've got a lot of ground to cover, so let's not waste any more time. Let's roll the intro. So the number one question I get is about comparing these different softwares. The number two question I should mention is how are you doing with your New Year's resolution of trying to reach a billion subscribers? Unfortunately, uh, last time I checked, I was just a little over 999 million away. So still a little ground to make up, but if you will take a second to subscribe before we get going, uh, I can inch a little bit closer to that goal. So. Let's take a look at the different softwares. The three specifically we're going to look at today are Photoshop, Luminar AI, and Topaz. Now, of the three, I've been using Photoshop the longest. I've been using Photoshop since 2000, whatever version that was back then. So it's been 20 years. I'm kind of ingrained in my workflow with Photoshop. I've been using Topaz probably half that time, at least 10, 15 years and uh, so still pretty familiar with that. Luminar I've only been using really since last year, so it's the least familiar of the three programs. Of course, Luminar AI hasn't even been around that long. So I think, first of all, when you look at the big overall pros and cons, starting with Photoshop, the, the biggest pro is that it's kind of the gold standard for image editing software. It's been around forever. It is a beast of a program. It does so many different things. Most people only use 10-15% of the stuff that it actually does. Uh, it's such a broad program. The downside to that, of course, is the learning curve. It can take a long time to get comfortable with Photoshop, and you can have someone who's been using it 20 years who finds out something like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize it did that, or I've been doing this the wrong way. So it's kind of a never-ending learning curve, and every time they come out with new updates, you're kind of going to go through that a little bit as well. However, once you kind of wrap your head around how things work in Photoshop, even when they change things, it's pretty easy to adapt. And as you start learning how the tools work, they get more and more powerful because you have a better control of how to use them properly. Another negative to Photoshop, in my opinion, is the price. You have to subscribe to it every month. Now, unless you've got an older version of Photoshop that you're using, but I'm assuming that you want to keep current and be using the, the newest type thing, you've got to do a subscription, which last time I checked, I think they've got a just Photoshop Lightroom subscription that's like $10 a month. So it's not terrible. It's just you're kind of locking into a lifetime of paying that cost which I'm not crazy about, but I mean, you do it with Netflix, with your cell phone, with a million other things. So subscriptions, I guess, are kind of the wave of the future. So we're all going to just kind of have to get used to that, I think. But especially if you're a professional photographer or aspire to be a professional photographer, $10 a month is not a huge cost of doing business. And I think it's well worth doing it. With Topaz, you've got a few different options. Most of their programs are in the $80 to $100 range. They've also got a program called Studio 2, which is around $100, and it kind of encompasses all of their programs. It has features of just about all the different plugins that they sell, um, probably just not quite as robust and as many options and things as you have by buying each individual one, but it will give you a broad overall um, sense of all their tools. And it's kind of more designed to compete with Photoshop as a one-stop workflow that uh, lets you uh, work on the images from start to finish, and um, that's kind of what it's designed for. Luminar AI, uh, to do just a, what they call one seat, where you just use it on one device, is I think $79. It's $99 for um, two seats, and it's another all-encompassing program that, again, is designed in a way that it could replace Photoshop, that you could do pretty much everything you would need to do in it. So, when you look at just price alone, Photoshop's kind of the odd man out because it's that $10 a month, which over time, it, you're going to way pay a lot more for that than you would just paying $79 for Luminar AI, for example. Next, let's look at the AI, which is kind of the new up-and-coming thing in 
photography software. It's actually been around for a while, but it's gaining popularity. And it's basically letting the computer look at your image and decide on what things need to be done, how much they should be done, and things like that. And there's a lot of controversy about that. Some people really don't like it, feel like it's taking away from the purity of photography. For me, I think every tool you have just makes you stronger. You don't have to use everything. You don't have to just totally default to what the computer is telling you to do. If the computer uh, suggests making one, one type of adjustment, you can modify that or go in a totally different direction. So to me, it's just having an extra option. And all, all three of these programs have that to a certain degree. Topaz and Luminar call it AI. Um, Adobe calls it their Adobe Sensei. And it's a lot of the same type thing. It's that computer looking and analyzing images for you and helping you make decisions. And I think that there is not really a clear winner in that category on whose is more powerful. I think they're all going to constantly make different jumps. It's kind of like having a Canon or a Nikon camera or whatever. Um, one's going to be better than the other is going to be better. I think they're all pretty strong. It's just going to be a matter of using which one for which job. Okay, so how do I use the software? Well, again, as I said before, I've been using Photoshop for like 20 years. So I have a really hard time switching over to something completely different for my workflow. It'd be like someone came out with a new typewriter uh, keyboard for your computer and it's a whole different set of keys. And I was like, well, I've been using the regular keypad for 20 years. Even if the other one was much more efficient and faster, I probably wouldn't want to jump through that learning curve all over again. So I stick with Photoshop for the bulk of what I do, at least as far as the nuts and bolts things, opening a file, doing the basic adjustments to it. Uh, finishing out a file um, at the end, exporting it, and things like that. However, in between, when we're doing all that enhancement and taking images in different directions, that's when I find Luminar and Topaz to be uh, really helpful. Now, the thing about both Topaz and Luminar, and this is a good and a bad, however you want to look at it, is they both have tons of presets. And for most images, the vast majority of them will not work. They're gonna, they're just too crazy. They do some sort of a really drastic change to the image that just kind of looks overpowering and you're not gonna like it. At least that's how it is for me. However, if you spend enough time trying different ones, you're gonna stumble across one and go, oh, that looks really cool. I'll give you an example. I did a, a senior session recently and just decided to take the image into Topaz and try out a couple of different presets on it and went through. And all of a sudden I came across one, it was actually called Blueprint, which gives it just, I guess, like a blueprint type look, but everything's really blue and more line drawing looking. And 99% of the time that thing comes up, it looks horrific to me and I never use it. But for this one image, it worked perfectly. And it just gave this really awesome look. And that ended up being, um, what the client purchased uh, their wall portrait of was something using this blueprint plugin. And so in certain occasions, it works perfectly. You're just going to have to kind of go through and find the right one, whether it's in either one of those pieces of software. Obviously, you can go in in the pure manual edit mode and just go right to making all those changes. And as you get better at it and learn those tools, kind of like in Photoshop, you know right where to go. If you want to sharpen something, you know right where to go. If you want to add contrast, you know right where to go. However, those presets or looks or whatever they call them in each software um, are super helpful for either when you're just starting out and don't know how to work all those different things, or you just kind of at a loss and you have an image and you go, let me just throw a bunch of things at this and see what sticks. And you'll really be surprised how many times something like that does stick. And that's the thing about it is especially if you're a professional or serious about doing this, all you need is one or two of those presets to really make a difference for you and create an image that is a sellable image for you that wouldn't normally have been a sellable image, and software's already paid for itself. So it's a low enough entry point with both of those that I think it's well worth having it. I should mention, by the way, with both Topaz and Luminar, you can use the discount code Larry Photo to get a little bit of a discount on the software if you decide you want to try those out. I've got links down in the description of how to get to all three softwares if you don't have one of them and you want to learn more about it. So feel free to check those out. Remember to use that coupon code if you do end up making the purchase and it'll save you a little bit of money. Which brings us back to the question of which is better between the three. You know, which is the better sharpener? Which is the better denoise? Which is better at removing unwanted objects? Which is the better sky replacement? And I think those are all going to be different. I think the answer is going to be different for each one 
not only for each category, which, uh, which software may be better at sky replacement, the other one may be better at sharpening, and the other one may be better at denoise. Unfortunately, there's not one that clearly dominates the other two. They're each going to have their own strengths and weaknesses, and if you've watched some of my videos where I've compared you know, sharpening something in Topaz versus Photoshop, or adding sky in one versus the other, you can kind of see that there are times that one definitely does better than the other, but a lot of times it depends on the image. It depends on which version you have. You know, uh, they're constantly updating these softwares. And so while the current version of one may be better than the other, six months from now, maybe by the time you're watching this video, the next one is better. So you're going to have to kind of investigate it and see which ones that you use the most, uh, which one does the job better. For me, they're close enough and they have different strengths that I use all three pretty regularly. Again, I do the bulk of my nuts and bolts workflow in Photoshop, and I do a lot of the sweetening or taking stuff in a crazy direction with Luminar and Topaz. For example, when I'm doing sky replacements right now, I almost always just use Luminar because I think right now they've got the kind of easiest to use, best working workflow on dropping in skies because it not only drops in the sky, it gives you the reflection in the water, which is really cool, and it affects the scene. It just works really well. But the other two are coming along in just about every category as well, and so it really depends on what it is you're trying to do. So the big question is, if you don't have all these pieces of software, which one should you get? And I think that depends on where you are in your photographic journey. Let's say you are brand new to digital photography, don't know anything about Photoshop. That might be a huge learning curve for you. Um, if I was starting over today, I might just jump into a Luminar AI and just use their workflow, and it may do everything you need, and uh, you wouldn't have a need for the others. Um, if you have some knowledge of Photoshop and you're comfortable with that, maybe you add these others as supplements. It just kind of depends on how much time and money you want to invest into it. And I think that, for me, Photoshop is kind of the one standard. But I think Luminar and Topaz could both be that standard for you, especially if you've got very specific needs. If all you're doing is opening an image, sharpening it, maybe removing noise, um, giving it some sort of saturation, and things like that, either one of those software, Studio 2 or Luminar AI, will probably fit the bill for you. And for just a one-time payment, you have that software and it will do everything that you need. You won't have the power and flexibility of Photoshop, but chances are you weren't going to use that anyways. If you're a professional or starting down the road of being a professional, I think you have to have Photoshop just for the flexibility. But at that point, I would probably add one or both of the other plugins just to give you that extra little uh, set of options to tweak your images and things like that. Again, uh, you, it's just a cost of doing business, and I think they're relatively inexpensive, especially if you use a discount. And so, to me, those are both kind of no-brainer purchases. But that's how I see the three. Would love to hear your thoughts on which you use, uh, what you think it does well, what you think it does poorly. Um, do you agree with uh, my evaluations of them, or do you have different thoughts? So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Leave me a comment. But Hopefully that gives you an overview of what the three do and gives you a little direction on where you should go, uh, again, depending on where you are in your photographic journey. They're all great tools. They all do a lot of things. Honestly, you could probably get by with just one uh, of the three, but uh, I don't know. I'm a bit of a software hoarder, so I have all three of them because I can't help myself. Anyways, I hope that helps. I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.